Thank you. All right, so in uh, December, we released Cubase Pro 8. Um, and it, you know, the developers in Hamburg put a, you know, a tremendous amount of effort in making this turn into reality. And one of the big things that is not so apparent when you kind of look at specs is kind of the kind of overall software overhaul that they did. Um, one of the developers kind of likened it to me when I was speaking with him this past summer of, you know, it's like you have this beautiful house and then we're going to leave the house standing, but we're going to redo all the plumbing, the electrical, the foundation, all that stuff underneath. But, we're, you know, but to the user on the outside, it still kind of looks like the same house. So we're going to see some pretty significant performance optimizations. Uh, so, you know, we've had composers that have told us that, you know, with templates in excess of 1800 tracks that they're seeing like 60% performance decreases from 7.5. So they kind of did a lot of performance optimizations and it's very apparent on Mac as well as the Windows platform. Everything we do is 32-bit and 64-bit as well. Now, as we add features, and Cubase is by far the most feature-rich uh, workstation software available, you know, where we see multiple people kind of, I hear people complaining all the time that they use one program for loops, one for MIDI, one for audio, one for notation. When you use Cubase, you really can do everything in one single program. And that makes kind of, you know, the workflow significantly better because you're not constantly waiting for, you know, program X to be updated as program Y was updated two months ago and kind of out of sync or, you know, abandoning plugin formats, stuff like that. We don't do that. So, you know, we have people that are still running plugins that they've had since 1997 in their systems. That's not uncommon. Um, and, you know, people make a good living using those plugins, you know, day in and day out. So it's important for us to actually maintain file compatibility to make sure that you're able to use your existing tools. Now, everything I show you is on Mac or PC. It's 32-bit and 64-bit. So just because we're running on a 64-bit OS doesn't mean that we get rid of all your 32-bit plugins. So we have bridges to run those for you as well. So you don't have to abandon uh, all of your different plugins. Um, now, one of the big things is instead of constantly adding features, which we always do with every release, we want it to really optimize workflow. Um, because you, know, you could have like a zillion features and it don't do you any good if you can't actually get stuff done. Uh, and we have people that, you know, use a tremendous, you know, to sit there and do hours and hours of work a day with Cubase. I had a film composer once tell me that, you know, he actually prorated that each mouse click could cost him up to $12, you know. And so he's like, if I could do this in two mouse clicks versus four, three versus six, you know, it just speeds up the workflow. So that was, was one of the primary focuses that we did with this. Um, so as we kind of look at our projects here, um, we could see some new elements here. So one of the new things we're going to have is the ability to actually dock particular tracks here. So at this point, you could actually say, okay, I want to see all my virtual instruments docked there. So we don't want to necessarily abandon the concept of having multiple screens because a lot of our users have two screens. I have a friend in Nashville named Jim Corgan. He has nine screens for his Cubase setup. It looks like Star Trek. It's really cool. Um, but, you know, so we're not going to move it to a single screen DAW because it doesn't really do the users any good because, you know, like, oh, I could get another 24 inch screen for, oh, only $79. You know, so why not? So you, you can have all your different elements docked. So we could actually see all of our VST instruments. Or we could just see our media bay. So if I wanted to actually just kind of drag and drop instrument presets, sound files, open up project windows, track presets, we could just drag these directly from our media bay. Or if I want to see all my VST instruments, I could just do that. Or if I don't want to see any of those things, I could just hide it just by hitting Alt or Option T. We could also come up here in the upper left-hand corner and we could choose to hide the racks visible there. Now, one of the things that we want to do is we see that people are working with, you know, in excess of nine screens, uh, that we wanted to kind of actually make the workspaces uh, a little more uh, workable, if you will. So this is one thing I never personally got to work well in previous versions of Cubase, 
But now you could actually say, okay, I just want to see this project uh, with a mixed console and my rack, or I wanted to see, so these are kind of pre-configured, you know, screen views, if you will. So if I wanted to come here and say, okay, I want to see the project in HD. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is as we work with these, we could actually choose when we add a workspace, we could choose whether this is gonna be a global workspace. So if I always want my mixer and my effects rack and my media bay to be docked here, or if I want it to be specifically for the project. So that way we could have our project workspace just laid out for us directly as well. So once I open up that project, I can see very specific things that are unique to that project and don't apply to my 700 other projects inside of Cubase. Now, a lot of us have tons of plugins, right? You know, you see all the beautiful, like, you know, Black Friday specials, you know, 50 plugins for 50 bucks. You know, it's like, how can you turn that down? You know, so, you know, and sometimes you go, well, I like four of those plugins, but I still have to see 46 plugins. Um, or I wanted to actually manage my plugins more effectively. So we actually... In our under our devices menu, we have what we call plugin manager. So I could see all my VST effects, my VST instrument plugins, and we could add and create collections. So let's say, okay, I want to create a collection for drums. So at this point, I could have an empty collection. I could say, you know what, I want this, 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 and this plugin, and I could just drag these over and have my drum plugins. And I could also right click and say, let's create a folder. So. I wrote that in Greek. <laughs> Just, uh, and then you could actually place plugins within your folder. Then if I wanted to instantiate plugins, at this point all I have to do is, let's say if I go to my inserts, I could just say, okay, here's my drums plugins, or these are my favorites, or these are all the plugins. So you could actually just toggle back and forth between and set up your plugins how you want to see them not how not by limited by device or type or manufacturer so if you don't want to see those 46 extraneous plugins just don't see them it's that simple uh, now one of the things you know as we've added features in Cubase is we have you know a tremendous amount of options directly here on the on the left hand side in something called the inspector so but as we add features like we add the chord track there's a new inspector tab. We add track versions. There's a new inspector tab. So sometimes, you know, people are like, okay, you know, I need apparently 15 different inspector tabs open and I could see everything. But now we thought it'd be cool if you could actually just kind of scroll up and down and have all of your inspector tabs open. And you could just use your actual mouse wheel if you wanted to see every single element. And you could reorganize these to change the order. But now instead of always having to open and close, you just use your mouse scroll wheel to navigate up and down that easily. So a lot of things just to make your life and workflow significantly easier. Now, one of the features that we added in QBA 7 or is kind of the ability of having a lot of different rendering options. But, and we expanded this in Cubase Pro 8 because we see a lot of composers, and especially here in the Los Angeles area, there's tons of film composers. Uh, and a lot of them, you know, make their living with Cubase. You know, so a lot of guys that you've seen, you know, nominated for Golden Globes, those projects are done in Cubase or for Oscars year after year. And film composers always really push the envelope of gear. Uh, because, you know, if you, if you say, oh, great, you know, you know, you can have a full orchestra. Great, you can do that. And you say, you know, if you give the composer 10 years ago 32 tracks of an orchestra, they'd be happy. Now they need 1,800 tracks. So, you know, one of the things that we want to do is realize that at some point, every computer is going to run out of horsepower, you know. And, if, and the more power you have for your computers... What that means is the sample developers can have higher quality samples, higher bit depths, higher sample rates, better plugins. So once you have more power, it's often offset by the plugin developers saying, great, we can now do this and add this functionality because that power exists. It wasn't there before. So eventually your computer runs out of horsepower. So we thought it'd be cool if you could actually just kind of, if I have like a MIDI or an audio part here, I could just right click and you choose render in place and I could just say, oh, it's render. And then what it's gonna do is just kind of take that one particular file and 
It's going to just turn it directly into an audio file. And it's going to place it directly below, and this is by default, and will mute the original MIDI part. Why do we do that? Because it's the right thing to do. So just that easy. Now, if you have an entire track, you could actually just come here. And there's also different render setup functions. So if I wanted to go to my render setup, I could come over here and I could say, OK, I wanted to do this uh, as separate events. So if I have like 10 different little clips, I could have those 10 different audio files with all their timestamp information. I could also have it as a block event or as one contiguous event. Uh, and I could choose to have the audio dry. I could choose to have it with my channel settings, such as my inserts, EQs, and my channel strip. If I wanted to add the complete signal path, that adds the effect sends. Or I could add the complete signal path plus the master effects as well. So if you have like a compressor on, on the stereo out to get that magic sound, you could include that. Uh, if, and we could also give it a name. We could also have a tail. So if you have a delay or reverb that goes beyond the boundary of the border, you could say add five seconds or add a measure of delays and reverbs to that. Uh, and if I have just a part selected, I could also just say, okay, I want to keep the source tracks unchanged. I want to mute the source tracks. Or if I just wanted to unload the instrument, unloading memory, unloading the processing power, I could just disable the source tracks or just remove the source tracks entirely. So even if I have like multiple non-contiguous events, I could just come right here and say, okay, let's just take these different events right here. And at this point, I could just say, okay, let's just render in place. And this is all, you could have your own user assignable keyboard shortcuts. Hit render. And notice that it doesn't like, you know, place it at the bottom of the project window, which is always great when you have an 1800 track template. Uh, and it actually carries a color over from the part itself. So this way, again, you just kind of hit the button and it's like, oh, it's already being done. And you could choose your bit depth and resolution. So now you could just see your three different parts placed directly underneath. That simple. So a really, really clever, slick implementation of that. So great ways of kind of saving CPU resources to be able to just kind of turn it into an audio event just that easily. Mm -hmm.